This is a video to teach you about chromosomes, what they are, and uh, how they operate. So you'll remember from what we've already studied that DNA is a double helix strand, which is then wrapped and packaged around histones, and that is further wrapped and further wrapped and further wrapped until eventually we get the chromatin material. Now, under normal circumstances in interphase, you can't see specific chromosomes. All you can see is the chromatin material. However, when the cell is about to divide, again, during interphase still, the DNA is replicated and it's then packaged even more tightly to form a chromosome, which is what you can see here. Okay, that's your chromosome there. Now, that chromosome is made up of several parts. It's made up of a chromatid, which was the original uh, DNA, the original chromatin material, which is half of this one and half of that one, which is then joined together at a centromere. Now, let's just review very briefly how that happens. So here we have our original chromosome, which is a single stranded or a single chromosome. That is your centromere. And there is the original part on the other half of that chromosome. Now you can see that the DNA has unzipped. And here we have the new strand of DNA being added to make a new double helix. Same thing here. This is the part that has unzipped. So those two originally were joined together. And here is the new strand that is being added to it. That continues, that process continues up until the centromere. And likewise, from this end, it would start at the other side and move towards the centromere, with the result being that you've then got a double chromosome. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so there's your chromosome joined at the middle with a centromere. Notice that we call one of these, when it's a double one, we call one of these a chromatid. And that's the other chromatid. Okay, so th the basic structure. As we've said, chromosomes you find in the nucleus, they carry genes, and you can only see them when the cell is about to divide. Under normal circumstances, it's only visible as the chromatin network, um, a sort of massive strands. Uh, but at the time that the cell is ready to multiply, that DNA is replicated, and then it's packaged even more tightly into that chromosome. We say it's condensed, in the same way that in physics you condense something um, you, m you make it smaller, uh, or it precipitates, is the other word that we use for it, into a chromosome. Now, your chromosomes, you obviously have two, for from, rather, they appear in pairs, two for each type. So, the number of chromosomes that you have doesn't depend on your intelligence, doesn't depend on uh, how complex you are, what it depends on is your species. So humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. One pair, or one set of pairs comes from your father, one set of pairs from your mother. And those then fuse together in order to give you your 46. If we look at sunflowers, sunflowers have got 32, uh, 34 chromosomes. If you look at ferns, a particular species, 1,250 chromosomes. So as I said, it, it the number of chromosomes doesn't determine how complex you are. Uh, it's just simply a feature of a specific species. Now we use these terms diploid and haploid to indicate what, how many chromosomes you have um, and how many pairs you have. So under normal sense uh, situations you have a diploid cell. That diploid means that it has uh, a pair for each of them. Uh, so if you've got 26 pairs, or as a human, you've got 23 pairs. That is the diploid state. And that's what is normal in most organisms. However, in a gamete, b you need half of that amount. Because in a gamete, you're going to have two gametes joining together to give you the normal diploid state. And so, if you have a normal diploid state in a gamete, you're then going to wind up with four sets of the DNA. And unfortunately, in certain species, particularly in mammals, the moment you get more than two sets of DNA, you wind up with uh, such serious consequences that actually that fetus becomes aborted or will be aborted. It will not be able to survive. Plants are slightly different and we'll look at that later. So gametes are haploid. They only have one set. They do not have a pair for each of the, the different chromosomes.
Now those pairs are called homologous. So as we've already said, you get one set from your father, one set from your mother. The set from your father we call the paternal chromosomes, the set from your mother are the maternal chromosomes and they fuse together during fertilization. They code for exactly the same genes. So on a particular chromosome you will have a particular gene. So let's say chromosome pair 23 determines whether you are male or female. And that particular number, chromosome 23, doesn't matter who you are. If I look at your chromosome pair number 23, it will have the genes on it that determine whether you are male or female. So it carries the same genes in the same positions, in the same loci. However, those genes might have different alleles. Remember that an allele simply means a different expression of that gene. So if you've got blue eyes versus green eyes, if you're tall versus short, those are different alleles, variations of a particular gene. So carrier type is how we visualize these things. Now a carrier type, what has happened is that we allow the cell to replicate the DNA and then we stain it, we, we fix it and we stain it under uh, with a particular stain and then photograph that. And then we literally cut up that photograph and rearrange those chromosomes on a grid so that we can actually identify the different, uh, the different chromosomes that are present. So this is the process. Uh, we usually have some sort of DNA sample, blood, saliva, skin cells, whatever. Usually it's blood because blood is the easiest to identify. At that point, we then harvest those cells and we use a drug to force them to replicate. So we artificially make them think that they're about to go through mitosis or meiosis, that they're about to replicate. And so the chromatin material then condenses or precipitates into chromosomes. At that point we add another chemical which fixes it so that they can't then continue on and actually divide. Uh, we then put those cells on a microscope slide, we add a stain, we take a photograph through the microscope, uh, which you can just see here, that's the photograph, and then we cut that up and uh, rearrange the pairs. When it's rearranged it looks something like this. So here you can see that for each of, and this is obviously a carrier type for a human being because there are 23 pairs. For each pair you can see there's one and there's the other. Okay, and you can see that in each of them it has, it's a double chromosome for each of them. There's one and there's its pair. There's one and there's its pair. Uh, if you come down here, there's one and there's its pair. Now Chromosome 23 in humans is what determines our sex, and that's a very special set of chromosomes. We're going to talk about those ones in, in just a minute. Notice that most of them have a sort of X shape, which is fairly typical. Um, we're not sure from this diagram which is the paternal and which is the maternal, but you could assume that that is the paternal one and that is the maternal one, and that they've each replicated. Remember, in normal circumstances, if you look at a cell during interphase, the chromosomes appear as single chromosomes. They don't have that X shape. They just look like a long stripe that's had a, a, a little waist pinched in at the middle. It's only just before mitosis or meiosis, just before cell division, that that single chromosome will then replicate itself to become this double chromosome that has the X shape. Alright, so here we have a double chromosome. You can clearly see the two chromatids with the centromere in the middle. This is obviously a schematic diagram. It doesn't really look exactly like this, uh, but this is how we represent it. And you can see the banding pattern on it. Now that banding pattern shows up only when we stain the chromosome. And what that indicates is different regions on the chromatid. Each of those regions will contain hundreds of genes. But we can identify the region and we can identify which genes come from those regions. And that's what the Human Genome Project uh, set out to do and they have actually sequenced all of the genes that are present in the human genome. So they can tell you on each chromosome in each region what gene is found there. Alright, so I said we would talk a bit more about uh, chromosome pair 23. Now, the other 22 pairs we call autosomes. They deal with our general characteristics, the number of arms and legs that you have, uh, the color of your skin, the sort of hair that you're going to have, how big your nose will be, what color your eyes will be, etc. But pair 23 is special because pair 23 determines your sex. And so we call it a gonosome. Gono coming from gonad, and gonad being your testicles or your ovaries, the, the structure in your body that produces gametes. Uh, 
So your gonosomes are the chromosomes to deal with sex or that deal with sex. Now in a human male, those two chromosomes are always an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Uh, and in the female, it's an X and an X. So when you look at a karyotype, if we go back to this uh, diagram, if you look at that karyotype, you can see quite clearly in pair 23, we've got an X and a Y. Therefore, this individual is a male. And that's the overview of your chromosomes.